Good evening, everyone. So this is my second video of the day. I did not post my first one. Last minute, I decided to pull it because I got quite emotional in it. And I'm not ashamed of the emotion, but I think I lost some of my message and it wasn't quite as, as clear. So I'm going to try this a second time. I wasn't going to make the video at all in the first place because so many YouTubers have covered this story and uh, other outlets so well. I will put Julie Mora's a video about this in the description below because that was the one that I watched this morning that kind of inspired me to really put my own iron into the fire on this one because ultimately my heart's been quite heavy about this for the last few days and I do want to say my piece or at least try to figure it all out which is sometimes these videos are helpful to kind of talk it out with the viewers right so please feel free to engage in the comment section if this is a bit too heavy for you uh, it's going to be a bit of a dark topic. I am going to, you know, try to reach the soul, as I always say in my videos, but it's not going to be a, a happy, positive topic this time. No pretty songs. It's going to be a little bit darker because there's some bad stuff happening in Canada and I'm really concerned about it. So if you're not up for that right now, I totally respect that. You have to be in the right headspace. So if that's the case, I will just catch you next time. But yeah, please stick around if you'd like to work through this with me because... The issues that have come up since Marissa Shen's uh, murderer has been charged have been quite heavy. So I've made a video about this already. You may have seen it with regards to the mainstream media and how they covered this initially and how they immediately just jumped on the bandwagon of telling Canadians how to think and feel. And the biggest concern was how to not isolate the refugee community and make sure that we all know how great the refugee system has been and how we shouldn't question this isolated incident. So this video isn't about that, because that dust settled and I got over my frustration. But I didn't get over the anger and the disgust because it just got worse. So first of all, if you are some of my newer viewers from the US, um, I will leave some info in the description below to give you an idea of what story I'm talking about. But it's not so different than the outrage that was uh, brought on by the Molly Tippett's murder in the States, because this was done by a refugee that our government had brought in, that our, our Prime Minister had promised if anybody from Syria that they brought in um, harmed anyone in Canada that he would be responsible, well now something has happened and we're having a, a bad reaction to it, put it that way. So my concern right now is with our Prime Minister and the Liberal government and how they're responding to this and that's what's really really eating at me because as bad and horrible as this incident was, I mean it's hard. You can't get it out of your mind. I went for a walk tonight, you know, with my dogs, that beautiful time of night when the moon is out, but the sun hasn't quite set. And I was enjoying myself, but I couldn't shake that feeling of being a female walking on my own. I couldn't imagine what it would have been like for that young girl to be on her own going through that in the last few hours of her life. And it's very hard to wrap your head around that. Well, here we go again. We should all be disgusted, horrified, saddened, whether we knew her or not, doesn't matter. She was a little girl and she was Canadian and it shouldn't have happened. And people are questioning immigration and multiculturalism. People are questioning whether there are other ideologies that are contributing to these events because this is not an isolated event per se. We've had a lot of other things happen, pedophilic events, uh, attacks on cab drivers in Alberta. Questionable events that we've been told are mental health and have nothing to do with the radical ideology that I would call BS on, like Danforth. But I know that's not always the most common opinion or popular opinion. Things I used to think were hyperbolic that I'm starting to realize now are actually scarily true. What I'm upset about is that the uh, the emotions that are going on right now and the questions that people have are not only discouraged, but, you know, if you're a reporter and you bring it up, not only do you get called racist, there is a citizen that might throw coffee at you and not get in trouble for it because, well, because there seems to be a double standard. And we seem to have a government that doesn't actually have the back of Canadians, would rather back up his policies, his ego, and whatever evil master he serves. And what made this really obvious to me and really, really heartbreaking is that while I know Trudeau is not a great leader and I'm obviously wanting to get him out and pay penance for voting him in in my naive liberal years, it's hard when you realize that he's not just a numbnuts. 
it's more than just, you know, namaste, sock boy, true dope. It's not funny anymore. It's dangerous. It's despicable. He's evil. And what really made me realize this was the interview with Paul Wells. Paul basically, I'm paraphrasing terribly, but it's not about the words. He basically said that people are are judging Trudeau's response to all of this and saying it, that it's not enough or it's, it's unempathetic. And Trudeau just more or less said, well, I'm not someone that thinks like that. But it wasn't what he said. I, I paused it when he was sitting there and I looked at his body language and the guy was, you know, rigid, rigid, straight, dead eyes, no soul, no anything. He was just nothing. There was nothing there. And it freaked me out. It gave me the chills because he literally just didn't care. And he is bought and sold. And, you know, globalism, maybe even other things. I don't know. There's a lot of theories out there. And I don't know what's all true and what isn't. I don't know if I want to know how deep this rabbit hole of evil goes. But there is something wrong. And there have been way too many, you know, incidences of this hypocrisy, this double standard. Terrible events that happen that we aren't used to having in Canada as it is. And then the response to it is just, it's abhorrent. So after seeing that and then seeing these different memorials about Marissa Shen, so one was Faith Goldie's, I'm going to include that link also. You know, another person that I was wrongly, uh, I guess I made wrong assumptions about, Faith Goldie, Lauren Southern, these people speaking out about radical multiculturalism used to think they were white supremacist or racist because that's what you're told when you're looking at left news. And now I realize after all this time, they're just warning people. They might be a little bit provocative, but they're just trying to get a message out. And damn it, they take a lot of heat for it. You know, Faith Goldie was shouting out at Trudeau to try to get him to answer because he has blood on his hands and he won't answer. And we all know he has blood on his hands. And if we don't see that, if I'm talking to liberals right now, or NGPers, I hope you realize that I'm not just some xenophobic bastard. I have valid questions and I believe that empathy is being shown to the wrong people in this case. And I'm not worried about offending people. I'm worried about people dying. And whatever else happened to this little girl. I'm worried about the ideologies we're bringing in. I'm worried about the vetting of people we're bringing in. I'm worried about losing some of the things that make Canada so free and so amazing. These are not only my concerns. I've been watching a lot of things and listening to and reading a lot of nightmarish things about this topic and I don't want to believe that they're true so this isn't hyperbolic fear-mongering but our government doesn't have our back I don't know what the end goal is for this but it has got to stop and I don't feel as safe in my country as I used to and that makes me really sad and Joe Hayes another youtuber had tweeted out this morning that we need to stop sacrificing. I don't know if this was his original tweet or someone else's. I still don't really, I, I'm terrible with Twitter, but um, that we need to, you know, not sacrifice our children in the name of radical multiculturalism. So I pose that question to you guys. Do you think that's true? Did we sacrifice a Canadian in the name of something that we don't understand, that we've decided based on status quo that it's good? Because I think we have. And quite frankly, I'm not sure how to feel about that. And I don't want to believe that it's true. I'd rather believe our government's incompetent and silly and not evil and destructive. But I don't know what to believe anymore. When you get red pills, you know, for me, I did it incrementally so as to be able to handle it and tolerate it. But sometimes there's these aha moments that really just shake you. And for me, Julie Moore's video this morning talking about the hypocrisy from last year with the hijab hoax that he responded to just like that within, what, four minutes on Twitter? Oh, I'm so sorry to the family. Canada has no place, you know, intolerance has no place in Canada. Within hours. And then here we are. Crickets. No apologies to the family that I know of unless something's come up in the last few hours that I missed. And certainly no remorse and certainly not any any indication that the discussion is going to be opened up so pretty sick you guys our virtue signaling feminist human rights people kind prime minister has no freaking heart it's great 
People wonder why I'm going into politics. I mean, I still might not if, if my path shifts. Maybe it'll be that I'm meant to do commentary and, and music. But the reason that I'm fighting for any of this at all, the reason I do it at all, is because I feel like it's a duty. And if you don't fight for freedom, just because we have it, if you don't fight to keep it, much like in a marriage, if you don't fight to keep your love alive, you'll it'll fail. You still have to work at it just because you have it. You know, we're going to lose our freedoms if people don't stand up and fight. I had someone very wise tell me, uh, like a holistic healer, tell me that I shouldn't go into politics because I can have a full, happy life helping people, you know, by doing other things. And she's right. I could. I could live this dream and I could have my own retreat center and and do healing and, and workshops and all of these great things. And I could help people and have a ripple effect. And that would be a beautiful life. But what about the future generations, the coming years, the coming decades? Are they going to have the freedom to do those things? And who's going to fight for them? Someone has to make policy. Someone has to be trying to lead our country back in the right direction. We're already seeing things slip through our fingers. M103, Bill C-16, we're looking at possible gun bans. Our rights, as we have them, are being eroded. And it's not hyperbolic language to say that it's time to start thinking about fighting back. Not in a violent way. But if you can't talk about this, I don't know what people are going to resort to. So our government is not only, just so you guys know, if you're not in Canada, please know that our Prime Minister censors us, stifles us, and is now trying to tell us how to feel. And doesn't seem to care that a 13-year-old girl was murdered by one of his refugees. Justin Trudeau, you have blood on your hands. And we need answers. People are waiting. So about all for tonight. As always, be good to each other, but not because our awful, hypocritical, useless government tells you to. Blessings. And rest in peace, Marissa Shen.